it doesn't matter whether it is 30 players or 100 players mm. we have to do our job mm -hmm. which is to deliver good return on investment mm -hmm. uh, and this is the most attractive that we have seen in many years yeah. uh, from a investment yeah. perspective mm. so we should be locking up the yield for a longer period mm. of time youngsters don't need to worry about volatility because they have time with them they mm. have another 20 30 years available mm. with them Halo teman-teman tanam duit semua, selamat bertemu kembali dengan saya Muhammad Hanif. Saya sebagai salah satu co-founders dari Tanam Duit. Kali ini kita ada acara spesial. Kita berkunjung ke kantor mitra kami ya namanya Principal Asset Management. Kali ini kita bertemu dengan uh, direktur utamanya Principal Asset Management, teman lama saya Pak Nares Krisnan. Halo, apa kabar? Pak Nares, baik Pak Hani. Kita ketemu sudah cukup lama kita nggak ketemu waktu itu ya. Pak Nares nih uh, masih belajar bahasa Indonesia, so I have to talk in English. Bahasa Inggris saya nggak begitu bagus, tapi nanti kita dengarkan apa yang akan disampaikan oleh Pak Nares. Pak Nares, thank you very much for having me here. It's a, an honor for us to cooperate with or collaborate with uh, Principal Asset Management. As the new CEO here in Principal Asset Management Indonesia, we would like to hear about the Principal Asset Management Indonesia. Our uh, customers can have more information about the Principal Asset Management Indonesia. Please. Uh, thank you, Pahani. It is really a pleasure to reconnect with you yeah. after all the years. You know, yeah. So I'm very, very happy to yeah. catch up with you. I also want to take this opportunity to wish you and Tanam do it okay. all the success in uh, the years ahead. Thank you. And we are very grateful for the support that you have extended to our thank organization. You. Even though Principal may be a new company mm -hmm. in Indonesia, this entity has been there for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. In the good old days, the company was called as Niaga Asset Management, yeah. subsequently it became CIMB, CIMB Niaga, then mm. it became CIMB Principal, mm. now we call ourselves Principal, Principal Asset, Asset Management. management. Okay. Obviously all the changes in the name is reflecting in the ownership structure. Mm -hmm. Today uh, Principal has 60% of the major shareholding in the company mm -hmm. and that is why we are branding ourselves as Principal Asset Management. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we are uh, US based uh, financial services organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we are one of the market leaders in both asset management mm -hmm. as well as retirement space mm -hmm. uh, across the world. Yeah. And also in addition to US market, uh, principle is very strong in Latin America as well as in Asia. Okay. So within Asia, we are headquartered in Kuala Lumpur. So we mm -hmm. operate in Malaysia. Principal is one of the market leader in the asset management space in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We have a big operations in Thailand, Singapore, and in Indonesia. So I see. Um, it is a quite a strong multinational organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, our aim is to, obviously, you know, right, Asia, in particular ASEAN, has a lot of huge uh, growth potential, especially for the mm -hmm. financial services product. Mm -hmm. And principal want to invest and capture those opportunities. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why we are putting in a lot more effort to grow our business in Indonesia as well. I see. About the Indonesian market itself and also the competition, we have around probably 90 plus asset management company in Indonesia. So how do you manage the competition yeah. among the competitors? Yeah. From our perspective, it doesn't matter whether it is 30 players or 100 players. Mm. We have to do our job, mm -hmm. which is to deliver good return on investment. Mm -hmm. uh, most importantly, good risk-adjusted return to the customer, mm -hmm. you understand now. And, and that is where we need to focus on, and that is what we are trying to focus on. How do we differentiate in this overcrowded market? Mm -hmm. What is a unique value that we can bring to the table? and yeah. how we can address that particular market mm -hmm. which will be uh, interested in players like principal that is where we are focusing on you know i see okay as the new ceo here in indonesia for how long for probably it's almost 18 months 18, 18 plus 18 plus bulan. bulan wow that's quite quite a while yeah 
what is the new things that you can bring to the company partnership in our industry mm -hmm. it is very very people oriented industry mm -hmm. we don't have machinery and we don't have a, yeah. uh, you know the only thing that we have is talent right. and it is capability mm -hmm. i think that is where we have put lot of our energy mm -hmm. in the initial months so today i'm very proud to uh, say 18 months time we have a very strong team mm -hmm. that we were able to assemble you know every area we were able to attract the best talent that is available in the market mm -hmm. and now today they are with us and we are all working together well and we are taking the company to a very different mm -hmm. level so now we are focusing on investing in technology as we speak there are so many areas where we are investing everywhere we are bringing in the best solution and we are trying to ensure that we will be able to deliver better products and services to our customers mm -hmm. as well as run the company in a more efficient manner mm -hmm. so but the next area where we want to focus on is product you know mm -hmm. that is the most exciting part of it mm -hmm. correct one area where we feel we have um, advantage is on the islamic side you know? i see our uh, Malaysian operation is seen as a leader in the Islamic space mm. in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. We call it principal Islamic asset management and they are a market leader in the Islamic space. So, so I think so it makes sense for us in Indonesia mm -hmm. where you know we have a huge Muslim population. Mm -hmm. How do we bring that Islamic capability in the asset management space mm -hmm. and deliver that capability to the market we find is a very interesting opportunity. Mm -hmm. So that is one area where we are putting in a mm. lot of efforts as well. Both the equity market and fixed income market uh, nowadays is under pressure. Yeah. So how do you see that for, I mean, until end of this year or probably until next year? We in Indonesia, we are so used to pressures from time to time. Right, right. I mean, I, I, I agree mean, with that. I, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think if at all there is one yeah. country right. uh, that is very resilient right. and uh, which overcomes all the challenges mm -hmm. with a smile yeah. is only Indonesia, I would yeah. say. You understand? Right. Now, so it is, it is unfortunate that we are going through challenging yeah. period. Um, but, uh, you know, I would say one thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I came to Indonesia in 97. So I've been uh, associated with the country for almost 25 years, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I can confidently say mm -hmm. today, I think Indonesia looks great mm -hmm. compared to the last 25 years. From all perspective, you know, wow. I think Indonesia is really looking very, very good, uh, mm -hmm. you understand now. Of course, that is not translated into the market. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, the financial services industry, in particular, the capital market uh, uh, is going through challenge. But this is not man-made by within Indonesia. It is all right. created from external circumstances, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So you have a war, you have geopolitics, mm -hmm. you have inflationary pressure in developed mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. All these are right now external in nature, but yeah. from a domestic perspective, mm -hmm. I think we are in a sweet spot and mm -hmm. we are in a comfortable position. So that's why I feel the current circumstances is very different from all the crises and issues that we have faced in the past. This is very, very different. Indonesia is looking very, very strong. You mm -hmm. understand? Now, so, so my feedback to the investing public is, I think we should be very confident mm -hmm. about our future in Indonesia, mm -hmm. about the investment opportunities available, mm -hmm. and we need to take a long-term view, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um, obviously, all these things become very, very critical if you have only a three-month outlook mm -hmm. or a six-month outlook. Yes, yes. Yeah. then you need to be careful. But mm -hmm. But in our industry, we always promote people to look at you know, the next three years, five years. Mm. So I think if you are looking for the long term, then there is nothing you need to worry and mm. you need to look, you need to use this as an opportunity. I right. think today our equity market is trading at 13 times earning. You mm. understand? Mm. Historically, we are used to trade at 16 times earning. And given that our economy is doing mm. very well, clearly the scope for future mm. is much, much more positive. So that means it is a very, very 
attractive timing to mm-hmm. enter the market so if you have a long term view you should be able to participate in the market yeah, yeah. same thing holds good on the fixed income correct mm-hmm. today you know the 10 year paper is almost yielding 6.9% almost you are able to get 7% on a 20 year paper you understand mm-hmm. now and the inflationary pressure is mostly outside indonesia mm-hmm. within indonesia our inflation is very it's much under control yeah. mm-hmm. and the real yield that we are getting is almost 200 basis points exactly. to 300, 300 basis points point. and this is the most attractive that we have seen in many years yeah. uh, from a investment perspective mm. so we should be locking up the yield for a longer period mm. of time if you have the money you know so i think both from a equity market perspective as well as from fixed income market perspective mm. we feel that the current uh, uh, situation is more an opportunity rather than a challenge mm. you understand now and that's what uh, and that is our duty to educate the mm. public and build that confidence mm. and capture that opportunity but you can even look at all the history right you look at the subprime crisis in mm. 2008 yeah. right of course we thought that the world is coming to an end correct mm. but you saw within 2 to 3 years the market nicely recovered yeah. and we had yeah. great recovery right yeah. but you look at it we became a investment grade in the next decade yeah. and today indonesia is where it is correct yeah. so all these are short term in nature so if we can ignore the short term challenge and look at the long term potential and the opportunity and that is where the real uh, opportunity is and that is where the real wealth is made and that is what we need to focus on probably you you, you would like to convey some message yeah. to the audience yeah, yeah. Um, you know so my advice to the audience is a very very simple message given that i think most of your audience are very young yeah. and they are all building their own exactly. uh, career 70% probably um, up to four, uh, 35 years old. Yeah, yeah. wow. Mm-hmm. That is very, very young, yeah. uh, you know. So I think at this particular age, uh, there is only one thing that the audience should focus on from a financial planning perspective, you know. How much we can set aside every month, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, whatever may be your position, whatever may be your earning, how much you can save and put it aside mm. is something that we need to build that as a habit mm. Mm. and we need to educate the audience to start early as mm. soon as possible Agreed. you need to start learning and experimenting you don't need to put all your money but you need to start early and you need to invest mm-hmm. and you need to when you invest then only you will learn it is like swimming right, right. you can't learn swimming by watching youtube video right, right. you need to jump into the water yeah. to learn swimming yeah. and that holds good for even in our industry right yeah. you uh-huh. need to uh, buy a mutual fund even if it is 100000 rupiah or 100 juta rupiah then see how the nav is moving yeah. and then what is helping the nav to move learn about it mm-hmm. then you feel comfortable with the whole process mm-hmm. that should be the first step i see the next step i would recommend all the young um, audience may not have huge disposable money available for right. investment it's mm-hmm. not like they have you know milliard and milliard that they can so they may have you know satu juta lima juta per bulan as per surplus money so they need to build an habit that they will be able to systematically invest for a longer period of time mm-hmm. you understand mm-hmm. the wealth is made by starting early mm-hmm. but also regularly investing every month mm-hmm. every year yeah. if you do it for 20 30 years you really build substantial wealth mm-hmm. the next thing is how do you grow in your own uh, Uh, asset allocation model in the beginning you start with simple and easy a money market fund mm-hmm. now so you get used to your money market fund mm-hmm. then you progress towards a bond fund then you progress towards a balanced fund mm-hmm. then you progress towards a equity fund mm-hmm. then you progress towards offshore equity fund right. slowly you increase your risk appetite mm-hmm. by experimenting learning and getting comfortable mm-hmm. but the most important thing is every time when we increase the risk appetite mm-hmm. automatically we are also generating better return mm-hmm. for a longer period of time yeah. you know youngsters don't need to worry about the volatility because they have time with them 
they have another 20 30 years available mm. with them so they should take more risk mm. and they should be able to invest for a longer period of time mm. and that is the best way to build the wealth you know a 2% increase in return over a 40 year period can double your wealth you understand mm. now and and that is what uh, the audience should focus on and that is what i would advise everyone so when i was young to tell you the truth um, Literally 100% of my portfolio was all in uh, equity market. No, I really? never had. I never had any bond. Uh, really? But today, of, of course, the situation yeah. has changed. Yeah, changed so right. there is a lot more fixed income it's on income, the portfolio. Yeah. There is a little bit more on the property side, etc. Yeah. But when I was, say, you know, in 30s and 40s, it's predominantly equity. You understand? Right. Because right. simply because you don't, uh, you can set aside the money mm -hmm. and you can invest for a longer term. And that is where the real wealth is made, correct? I mean, uh, so. Jadi tadi apa yang disampaikan oleh Pak Naresh itu uh, menarik sekali ya, uh, bahwa berinvestasi itu perlu proses, tidak bisa instant. Ya, dan semakin muda memulai investasi itu semakin baik. Dan tentunya dengan banyak uh, keperluan di masa yang akan datang, investasi dari awal ini juga akan men, uh, akan sangat menolong bagi teman-teman semua ya dalam memenuhi kebutuhan keuangan di masa yang akan datang antara lain untuk pendidikan anak uh, masuk perguruan tinggi untuk pensiun untuk dana darurat dan berbagai macam keperluan lainnya nah teman-teman semua ini uh, adalah akhir dari uh, obrolan saya bersama Pak Nares thank you very much Pak Nares for your insight for the information uh, more about the principle both uh, in Indonesia and uh, of course the global one. So uh, I hope our collaboration will continue and we can grow together Panaresh and we do hope that in the future we can uh, you know uh, conduct some probably event together with your team. So Panares, thank you so much. I uh, I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much, Panares. Thank you, Panif. Once again, wish you all the very best. Yeah, to, no? sure. And uh, look forward to the partnership with yeah. Tanam Duit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank this you. is the same, you yeah, know. We are all in the same category. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, teman-teman semua. Terima kasih. Sampai ketemu lagi uh, di lain kesempatan.